it's Winji. Welcome back to my channel. This is my favorite time of the week. Surprise! Hug! So today I'm going to be going through everyday objects and pointing out things on them that you really didn't know what they were used for, or at least I didn't know, which I found out and I was like, whoa, I gotta share it with you guys. During this video, make sure you count how many things you already knew. Give me a score out of anyone in the comments box below because I want to find out how many you guys got. I think I literally only knew about like three of these. But hold up, if you guys aren't part of the family yet here already, I encourage you guys to join. It's so simple, just click the subscribe button. Right now, we're doing a massive giveaway. To celebrate 3 million subscribers, I'm giving away three MacBook Airs to say thank you to you awesome people here. I appreciate you guys so, so much. To enter, it's so simple, you gotta do two things. The first is be part of the fam, and I reckon that's a pretty cool thing to be part of. Second thing is to be part of my vlog squad, which means subscribe to my vlog channel, which is actually linked in the description box. And oh my gosh, guys, if we get this video to 150,000 thumbs up this week, that would be amazing. We did it before, and I know we can do it again. I would really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's have a look at these 21 things and Let's find out what they're for. Let's go. So on all makeup products, you'll notice that there's this little symbol on the back with a number. It's usually 6, 12, or 24 depending on the product. This is actually telling you what the shelf life of that particular makeup product is. And in general, powdered products last longer than creamy products. And mascaras tend to have the shortest shelf life of all makeup. Which makes sense. The other thing you may notice is some tubes have a batch number at the top and you can actually go to a website and search the batch number to find out when that product was manufactured so you're not buying product that's like three years old and just sitting on the shelf. So a good idea the next time you open a makeup product is to get some washi tape and write the date of when the product will expire. So all you need to do is count the months from the day you open it. For most parts, there is a hole at the end of the handle and this is obviously for hanging them up but they actually have another use and that is to place your wooden spoon on and I'm always looking for somewhere to put my spoon when I cook like I either have to use an extra plate like place it on the lid and everything but you can actually use the end of the handle for this and it even catches the drips because of the angle it sits in life-changing guys super life-changing if you guys have one of these spaghetti strainers at home you may notice that there's a little hole on the bottom and this hole is not just there for extra drainage it's actually there so that you can measure one serving of spaghetti so if you're cooking for yourself and you want to know how much to cook if you just put a bunch of spaghetti through this hole you won't ever make a mistake of cooking too much and you're welcome so there's this little hole next to your camera on the back camera and I never knew what it's for, I thought it was like a vent just to let air in but apparently it's a tiny microphone and what this microphone actually does is it takes away the ambient noise from the main microphone so that you sound crystal clear to the other side Ever wonder why there's a hole in your pen lid? The reason is actually pretty shocking It's to stop kids from choking to death if they accidentally inhale the pen so I found this pretty crazy statistic online. If you ever thought that this wouldn't ever happen, apparently a hundred people choke to death on pen lids every single year in the US. What? So that's the reason why companies like Bic started putting holes in their lids. So in case people did choke on it, it still allowed the air to pass through, giving them time to seek medical attention. So you know these erasers with like a white side and a blue side? I always thought when I was a kid that the blue side was used to erase pen. I still think that to this day. So when I tried to erase pen with the blue side, it got rid of the pen a bit, but it also got rid of my paper. So then I found out this blue side of the eraser wasn't actually for rubbing out pen. It's actually for rubbing out pencil as well, but on art and graphic paper that's a little bit thicker. So when you use the white or softer side on this kind of paper, you'll find that you'll smudge before it actually removes the pencil away. So the blue side will just erase it without smudging. That's what it's for. At the bottom of every stapler, there's the metal plate and you can actually reverse this by popping it up and twisting it. And what this does is when you staple something, it actually turns the edge out instead of in like a normal staple. This is called pinning instead of stapling. By pinning something together, it is actually much easier to remove. You can even just grab a pair of scissors and do this. If you ever need to temporarily put any pieces of paper together, you can try this method instead of fully stapling. If you've ever blunted your X-Acto knife and you want a sharp edge again, there's these little ridges that give you extra blades, but I always found it super dangerous to be doing this. What I found out is actually the back of an X-Acto knife, the plastic bit, comes off and can be used as a snapper for your blade. If you notice there's a tiny, tiny ridge on the top part, all you need to do is insert this into a blade and then snap it. 
don't pull your blade out too far because it might snap more than one so make sure it's really tucked in before you do this and after it's snapped there's only one side that's sharp so you can grab it by the blunt side to remove it and throw it in the bin and I don't think this is common knowledge because when I search how to snap an exacto blade the top answer was actually to use a plier and some tape or something so yeah I don't think they actually know about this I always thought the flippable legs on the back of my keyboard were for ergonomics but this is not true typing with your wrist in a neutral position which is completely flat is actually the most ergonomic way to type this is there for people that need to look at the keys to type because flipping it up and propping it up gives you more visibility of the keys if you know your way around a keyboard then just leave those legs flat if you guys have a ballpoint pen you may notice there's a little hole on the side of the pen and that is called a vent hole and I didn't know what it was for but apparently when you're writing you actually create a vacuum pressure inside the pen the hole is basically there to release that pressure so the ink can keep coming out so if your pen doesn't have a vent hole you may experience like your ink stopping in the middle of your writing if this ever happens all you need to do is pull the pen apart to let some air back in and screw it back in and then give it a bit of a flick so that the ink goes towards the nib you guys know this have you ever noticed the little color blocks at the end of your toothpaste tubes are either like red green or blue there's a lot of information online that says that these indicate the actual ingredients that make up the toothpaste like whether it's natural or mineral but that is completely wrong and these little blocks are actually called color marks and they're byproducts of the production process and what they do is they tell the manufacturing machine when to seal it when it's going through it at super fast speeds so that's why it's at the end of the packaging look at your Apple earphones you'll see that there's a bunch of holes on them I never really thought about why apparently they're there to let the air in by allowing the air through it lets the diaphragm of the speaker move more freely which creates a better sound and if you happen to be talking with the earphones in you won't sound as muffled to yourself you guys ever notice there's a little switch or tab underneath your rearview mirror ever tried to flip it I actually knew this one already but I know a lot of you guys may not know it so I thought I'd share this with you so when you flick it you'll actually dim the reflections of your mirror so that if anyone is driving behind you with high beams that it's blinding you actually dim it all so that you don't get blinded by the headlight if you look in the gaps in your tires there's these little ridges that sit there they don't actually provide any additional traction I was wondering what they're there for so apparently they're there to tell you when your tires have been worn down so much that it's unsafe to drive on them and it's not only for your safety it's actually illegal to be driving around in tires that are worn below the ridge as well so make sure you check it and you don't get flat. I'm a huge klutz when it comes to using cling wrap and aluminium foil because every time I go to dispense it I always drop the roll out and it just goes on the table and starts rolling but did you know there's actually tabs on the side of the packaging which you can push in that holds the roll into place so that the next time you go to dispense some it will not fall out I even tested this turned it upside down and it didn't come out I don't even know how I got here without knowing this like what is my life? Ever seen the number 57 sign on Heinz ketchup bottles and wondered what it meant? I just thought it was a pretty design thing. Apparently it can help you pour the sauce out. So instead of tapping the bottom, shaking it violently and having a whole lot of sauce come out, having that little part of the bottle, just a little tap dispenses the perfect amount of sauce out. So at first I was like, this probably isn't true someone probably made it up but apparently mr heinz himself confirmed it if you go to the heinz website as well they also have this on the website so it's officially there only 11 percent of people in the world actually know about this join the club have i looked on the underside of your padlocks you might notice this little little hole on it i found out there's actually a really good reason why the hole is there apparently the hole is there so if there's any water or humidity that gets into the lock there's some way for it to escape and this is because if you're in a cold country and the water or moisture gets in and it freezes it actually destroys the lock mechanism making it impossible to even open your lock so that's why if you look at padlocks outdoor locks tend to have these and if you're in a cold country better check that's the case before you actually use a lock outside for indoor locks you're not going to find this hole it's less likely to have water and get frozen when you're inside so next time you look at your lock check underneath and you'll find out whether it's an outdoor lock or an indoor lock when you finish a chopper shop there's a tiny hole at the end of the stick and i always thought it was a whistle and i'd always try to play it but like it never ever worked I'd still try. 
And the reason that the hole is actually there is so that they can melt a little bit of candy into it. So it actually holds a lollipop onto the stick really securely. Without the hole, I'm pretty sure the whole thing will come off very, very easily. You ever notice the symbol on plastic containers? They're always there, but sometimes with different numbers. This is called the resin identification code, and it's there to tell you what kind of plastic your product is made out of. There's actually seven kinds of plastic, and look it up on Google if you want to know more. Generally, one, two, four, and five are considered the safest. The other thing you may notice on your plastic takeaway containers is something telling you whether it's dishwasher or microwavable safe. So check that out as well before you pop it into the microwave or dishwasher. If you've ever opened a Tic Tac container, you might have seen a ridge on the underside of the lid. It's actually a tiny little cup that fits one Tic Tac perfectly. If you've ever had the problem of having too many Tic Tacs come out, this is for you. So the proper way to dispense one Tic Tac is to turn it upside down and then slowly open the lid so that only one Tic Tac comes out onto that little cup. Mind blown! And rest in your car is obviously to rest your head. It also protects you from getting whiplash if you suddenly stop. But there's actually one more use for them that could probably save your life. I want to show you this video from a Japanese TV show. And if your car is ever submerged in water and you need to get out, all you need to do is stick it into the corner and then kind of push down like this lady is doing and it will actually break and pop open the car window. And the surprising thing is you don't even need to be that strong for this to happen. So if this ever happens to you, this could actually save your life. I hope you guys remembered to comment below and tell me how many out of the 21 you guys already knew and how many you didn't because I'm super curious to know. And if you guys want to like hang with me during the week, please join me on my social medias. I got Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. I do have a secret musically. Hashtag Wendy Corns. I'm gonna like stalk you guys. Like and comment on your photos. And you know I'm gonna miss you guys so much when I say this every week, but it's true. So yeah, I hope you guys had fun today and I'll see you soon. Bye! Love, I love you!